Ladies and gentlemen, the topic of our discussion this afternoon is when the Igbo people were one of the really rich people in the world, one of the really wealthy people in the world. I am talking about a time that was not too long ago, a time that artifacts representing, showing evidence that what I'm going to talk about really happened. There was a time in this world we live in when the Igbo people were among the richest people in the world, the wealthiest people in the world. I don't want to leave my flanks open. That's why I'm not categorically saying that the Igbo society was the wealthiest and the richest in the world. But um, it's up to whoever listens to this to assume that what I left unsaid is what I have in mind. And uh, continue investigating to see if there is any reason for me to have what I have in mind in my mind. The Igbo society was extremely wealthy because in this society there were no destitutes. There were people who were not rich, but they were not destitute. They had land and they had houses. If you have land and houses, or if you have land, you can't really be poor. Interestingly, per population and per ethnicity in the modern country called Nigeria, the Igbos have less land than any of the other ethnicities that live in this place called Nigeria. Only 29,000 square kilometers but the Igbos ensured that everybody had land men women according to my good friend and brother Joshua Celestine an African American who has some Igbo ancestry an accountant by training so he understands money and wealth he said if you have land, you can hardly be poor. I post so that you will think about what I just stated. Everybody in this society had land. A young man gets up to the age of 16. The family allots to him what is called an obi. As uh, the governor of Rivers sta stated, the governor of Rivers is one yes on week, an Igbo chap, who can be funny at times. He coined a song um, that goes this way, as we the sweet us, he they pain them, as he they pain them, he they sweet us. He was mocking his competitors in his uh, political party, the PDP. We have uh, enemies. Majority of them are homegrown, and a few are non Igbos who are anti Semitic as hell, who know that when the Igbo man accepts his destiny, his destiny is to be the Israelite, to be an Israelite, when he accepts it and throws away non Israelite traditions, the, one of the greatest powers in the world will rise. These are our enemies are aware of this. This weed, evil weed, 
are aware of this, so they do everything to cause confusion, to sow confusion. They form Facebook groups every day. They don't publish books. They form Facebook, Facebook groups called them Igbo History and uh, plant confusion there. I'm going to use Israelite culture to still inform both the Igbos and descendants of the Igbos what an Obi, to teach them, to inform them about what an Obi is. An Obi was what Neboth the Gileadite. Neboth, you remember Neboth? The guy that contested with Ahab. And Obi was what he refused to give King Ahab. You remember the king of Israel that was called Ahab, who married Jezebel. King Ahab, one of the kings of Israel that reigned at the time of the powerful prophet Elijah, saw a beautiful vineyard beside his palace. It belonged to one Israelite called Neboth, from the community called Gilead. He went and subscribing, respecting the traditions of Israel, the king knew that everybody in Israel had his own land. Just like in Igbo land, unlike in Egypt, in Yoruba land, in Hausa land, in Fulani land, in most of Africa, in most of Europe, in most of Asia, unlike in the latter. But like in ancient Israel and like in Igbo land, everybody had his own land. The king had his own land. So this king went to this Israelite and said, I want to purchase this land. Nebuchadnezzar said, this land is what I inherited from my ancestors. I cannot sell it to you. Because the king did not own land, he sulked and went away unhappy. And his foreign wife Jezebel said, my honey, my darling, sweet him, what makes you angry? The king reported to his queen, I needed that land for a garden. My brother Nebot refused to sell it to me, so I'm unhappy. The foreign woman used her foreign traditions to get rid of our brother Nebot. She lied, she concocted a lie, brought up some evil people, some people that are like these clowns that are moving up and down, forming Facebook groups to distort Igbo history. And they lied that Nebot uttered blasphemy and sacrilege against God and them um, against the sovereign. And Nebot was turned to death. But remember, he had to be killed unjustly for his Anobi to be taken away from him. And among the Igbos, remember I told you, things that represent what I'm going to tell you are still with us today. Among the Igbos, traditionally, the Anobi cannot be sold outside the Omonna. It could be used to attract a loan, but it cannot be sold. Because of what? God did not want destitution to develop in Israel. As long as you have the land, you can never really be poor. When the Igbos were in Omenana, they could use that land to borrow money. And in extreme circumstances, a portion of it could be cut, very small portion, and used to get a wife. Because if there is anything the Igbos value, it is children. But you cannot use money realized from sale of an OB to start a business. Because when you have land, you already have a business. So what did the Igbos do? Everybody farmed on his own land. There were tellers, there were people like my brothers, Rabbi Francis Duru. By the way, he's not just a rabbi, he's a medical doctor and a professor of medicine at, at that. He practices medicine. We had Dibia. Dibia are Igbo doctors. We have people, other doctors, like people like... Uh, um, and the oh, well, like, uh, lawyers like Emeka uh, Madoewesi, instructors, lecturers like uh, the Charles Tinoka for engineers like engineer Dubisie Zogo, historians like um, 
Osuji, Uchenna, architects like we had all professions, but everybody also farmed. And because everybody could eat very well, nobody was weighed down with burdens that communities could put on their shoulder. So this society was, was the richest in the world. Let me even come out openly and say it. And my colleagues on this channel, I don't start anything I don't intend to finish. Igbos, African Americans of Igbo extraction, Jews, Samaritans, Karaites, friends that follow this channel, we will bring that culture back. We will bring that Omenana back so that we can show the world that it is actually possible to have a society that is in accord with utopia. Meanwhile, before I say bye-bye, tell your friends to subscribe, share, and if possible, buy our books on Amazon. The proceeds enable us to continue researching and writing. Thank you, everyone.